After missing for six days, Hannah Anderson is safe and back in San Diego. But what are the next steps in this case? Joining us now is Sheriff Gore, who's been putting all of the pieces together and has been there from the very beginning and was really instrumental in bringing Hannah back here. And uh, he's joining us now with all the details. Thank you for stopping by. Well, some of the time. details. How's that? Well, as much as you can tell us. Okay. You know what I mean? That's and a deal. Sure. I, Mother of four daughters. So when the story broke out and the alarm, Amber Alert came out, well, you know, obviously we did everything we could to get the news out to right. find this young woman. I'm so elated that they found her and they were able to bring her back in and, and, and a rel relatively short time. From yeah, the time it was uh, uh, the result of a lot of really, really good work by a lot of people and not just Sheriff's Department personnel, I think what I find so gratifying mm -hmm. is that it was a federal, state, local, all of law enforcement coming together we have a history of doing that very well in San Diego, and it's so nice to see that same type of uh, mm -hmm. collaboration and cooperation extend all the way up and down the West Coast into Idaho, where mm -hmm. the er uh, eventual rescue was made. And you know what? I got to tell you, you're a great sheriff. This man has 33 <laughs> years of FBI experience. He was with the FBI for 33 years. Now he's a sheriff, one of the largest uh, jurisdictions in the country, right? Yeah, we're one of the largest sheriff's yeah. departments, third largest local law enforcement agency in the state of California behind mm -hmm. Los Angeles PD and Los Angeles Sheriff. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of territory to cover, a lot of responsibility, yeah. and really a lot of great people working with us. Well, you've done a great job, and oh, thank I you. thank you. We Thanks. all thank you. Um, let's talk yeah. about Hannah. Sure. What, what are the latest developments? Tell us what, what's happening and where well, we're Well, the best news, obviously, yeah. is that she was uh, rescued uh, up in Idaho, uh, Idaho and, and reunited. Um, we had a press conference yesterday. Her, her dad, uh, Brett, was able to thank all of law enforcement, thank the public really, and right. thank the media for all the great work they did in getting the word out, which really is uh, was instrumental in uh, in bringing Hannah back home. It, it hadn't have been for the, the the media coverage in Idaho because they didn't get the Amber Alert, right. as you got to recall. It was just the, the extensive media coverage that the four uh, campers on horseback that came across these two people in the woods thought they were out of place. They went home that night and, and then saw the coverage on TV. Mm -hmm. Hadn't have been for that, you know, when they saw that they said. Those are the two people they're talking about. Wasn't one of the horseback riders a former sheriff? Yes, former deputy how, up in the, in Idaho. So how awesome yeah, is that? Yeah, and it just didn't seem right uh, to him. He knew, uh, being uh, very familiar with the very very mm. rugged wilderness up in in Idaho, knew that these people, uh, you know, might be campers in California, but they weren't campers from uh, that wilderness mm -hmm. territory up there, and it just didn't look right to him. Especially when he saw uh, they had a cat with them. I think the comment, what, what are you doing with that cat up here? That's nothing but bait for a mountain lion. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So it's just crazy. It just it, the hairs on the back of his neck went up a little bit. And then the minute he saw their picture on, on TV, he knew those were the two people we were looking for. And that started that whole, uh, you know, uh, progression of events that led to the discovery mm -hmm. of the car Friday morning. And then the, uh, the, the recovery on uh, uh, Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon in the FBI uh, hostage rescue team shooting uh, DiMaggio and rescuing Hannah. So, and then she came back here, and uh, you know she's got a tough road ahead of her. Uh, yeah. it's My heart just aches for yeah. this young girl. I mean, uh, the loss. She's her mother's been murdered. Her younger brother's been murdered. So it's just it's going to be a, a lot of healing uh, going on and uh, and grieving. So why did why do you think <laughs> being your former FBI uh, agent probably more than that, but <laughs> what? Um, why do you think they told her the mother was murdered and her brother? Why didn't they wait for the father to break the news to her? Well, it's it's we had a uh, adolescent forensic interviewer, somebody mm -hmm. that's a psychologist trained in this type of interview, and we all decided up there that person is an FBI employee. We felt that was the best person mm -hmm. to debrief her, talk to her, talk her through the ordeal she'd been through, and break that news to her. And that's uh, that's why we did it that way. I, You're I, never sure in these types of cases exactly what the relationship is with family members. You just don't know. Let's face it, That's we all true. have different relationship with different, with different mm -hmm. relatives in our family. So we felt that was the best way to go and uh, you know. And the truth of the matter is we, you mm -hmm. didn't have all the pieces yet. And no. there are so many variables that were missing and anything's possible in this world. Right. So I I, and I know it's frustrating to a yeah. lot of people that uh, that want to know all the details. Uh, why did you do this? We might never have that answer. Because he's uh, crazy? <laughs> that, that's, that's, that could Freaking be part of it. Freaking crazy. And look, genetically sure. speaking, look at his father. Yeah. So many times you, you, you try to come up with it's a mass shooting mm -hmm. or some horrendous act. Well, why did the person do this? Especially when they're killed in the commission of that, that crime or they commit suicide. Mm -hmm. 
and, and, and sometimes you just can't come up with a rational reason for a completely irrational act. And that might be the case here. We're still in the process of looking at the, the results of the crime scene investigations mm -hmm. in Idaho at the car and at the, 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 the camping site, comparing that with what we're doing here in San Diego at the, at the uh, Boulevard residence, still doing interviews and trying to put everything together as best we can. Hmm. Okay. I, I'm, so what about this piece about the father? Um, forensically speaking, is there some sort of loose well, wire in the DNA that, I mean, it's weird that he mean, kind of followed the father's footsteps, falling in love oh, with the Oh, I see daughter. what you mean, uh, DiMaggio's yeah. father. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. A lot of it's, we, yeah. a lot of this will be speculation. Uh, the, the media did, uh, you know, a lot of research. Uh, yeah, they're good at that, aren't they? <laughs> Especially out. our reporters sure. at the UT. Sure. Look out! Yeah. Dug, dug out a lot of information. Yeah. We've did, done a lot of interviews, and uh, we're in the process of trying to put the whole puzzle together. Uh, there will be no trial in this case since DiMaggio's dead, but still, we want to, to make sure that all the, the questions that we can yeah. answer are answered, and that's what we're doing right now. You know, I wonder, <coughs> as a female and as a mother of these four daughters, I wonder if just seeing him killed like that gave her even more closure than having to relive it all through a trial well, and everything else. I mean, there's definitely a, yeah. a positive side to that. You yeah. know, you, you see so many times in kidnapping cases where the victim is in re-victimized during yeah. the course of the trial. Uh, she's just got a long road ahead of her. And, uh, so. you know, there's laws that protect her uh, in cases like this. She's a juvenile. Mm -hmm. uh, right, you know, if, it, if we hadn't had to publicize this to try to find her out there, her name would have never been released to the media. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it, it's an interesting uh, case and the fact that we return Hannah, a happy ending there. And then so. having to deal with all the publicity and everything else, sure. and it elevates her to Absolutely. Sta social status. Yeah. And But you know what, it seems to me on the outside, and I don't know the family, that she has a very loving, supportive family. And I'm, I'm hoping yeah. that's true. Uh, yeah, I've, I've just uh, spent a couple of times around her dad, uh, Brett. Mm -hmm. You know, he was estranged from, uh, from Christina and lived back in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, her uh, grandparents seem to be wonderful people. She has yeah. a lot of friends around her. And that's going to be part of the healing process, hopefully, uh, as they, she has somebody to reach out to, somebody to talk to. Um, so many times you go through a traumatic incident, mm -hmm. we see it in law enforcement with deputies and police officers involved in shootings. And, and it, the last thing you want to do is internalize that, uh, that, that, that emotion. Because it does so, cause more post-traumatic right, stress. Right, absolutely. So yeah. hopefully she's got a good support group around her. Yeah. Uh, I know that the... Uh, law enforcement and the district attorney's office, the FBI, we have uh, counselors that we've made available yeah. and hopefully the entire family will take advantage of that because they've all had a great loss here with the, with the deaths of Christina and, and Ethan. That's so sad. Yeah. It's, it breaks my heart. Yeah. You know, there's been reports that she's been uh, communicating online. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on that? Uh, we've seen those reports. Yeah. We've talked to the family. Beyond that, I'm really not going to say much. You can't deny or... <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I've, seen the, I've seen the postings uh, you yeah. know, online. Um, uh, it's interesting how it, this generation, yeah. how they communicate That's, with people. And so, it's a release. And let me tell you right. something. Yeah, if yeah. she feels like she wants to talk about it, she should be able to talk about it. If she feels like she doesn't, she should, right. she should be able to have some kind of power in this life that all this traumatic stuff happened and she was powerless. Let's give her back some of our sure. power, yeah. you know? Well, like we talk with kids. I don't care if it's our own kids or yeah. in a school environment. Uh, we always talk about the dangers of the Internet, that things go out on the Internet there. They don't just magically yeah. disappear. They're there for life. And we just, uh, you know, I think it's good advice for anybody. Think about what you're putting online before you do it. Yeah. Well, I hope that you'll come back. Is there anything else that you could tell no, us? Thanks. I I, no, thanks. I've said this con continuously. I want to thank the media, really, mm -hmm. for, for the, uh, really the support and getting the word out to uh, the public in this case. That was a, it's one of the key you know, factors in, in solving this case and getting Hannah back home. And now it's important, I think, to, to give her space, give her privacy so she can yeah. grieve and she can start healing. So I thank agree. you for your help. I Appreciate agree. It. She needs to come talk when she wants to talk, right. if she ever right. does. Right. Also, I totally believe every child out there should be protected and yeah. nurtured and we as a society need to make that happen absolutely and i don't care if people think these amber alerts are a nuisance <laughs> no, no well, way it, it was a it was one of the first times we've mm. used that and i think we learned from some of the mistakes there uh that they're going to make it yeah. better uh this is the way people communicate by smartphone cell communications if we want to get the word out whether it's a fire or a missing kid we're going to have to you know i think uh, fine-tune this technology which we're going to do and we will yeah. and you're so awesome oh, we're so lucky to have oh, you thank you, <laughs> thank you so much thank, thank you for talking
quite fine you time betcha. and hope to see you soon. Thank you.